Hello everybody. Before we get this video started today, I want to make a little bit of an announcement. And this is going to be something I'm asking as a favor from me to you all. Uh, in the past here, we have really invited for people to come visit us and see us here at our home and all. And we still enjoy company and we still want our subscribers that want to see our home and visit with us to still be able to do that. But we're going to ask you to don't show up in our neighborhood and roaming through here and stopping in front of our house taking pictures and stuff um, without making advanced plans with us. So yesterday, on a Sunday, we had a community meeting here. They came to my door, they were knocking at my door, James, we need you now. I had no advance warning. And we had like uh, a community meeting of all the houses in here, everyone living here. And they wanted to address some issues. And so uh, I thought, man, this is like a surprise because there's no advance notice. And Mel and I, we got on up there, we met up with everyone, and it was really good. They were wanting to form our HOA here. Now, the reason that we have not yet formed a HOA is because there wasn't that many of us living in here, and we were hoping that more houses would get built in here. Been a difficult situation just for us yet to get the HOA going. But because of security issues and people coming in the subdivision that don't belong in the subdivision and kids and stuff coming in and running around and strange vehicles and all, um, it was time that we do something. So we are putting guards on the gates and we're going to put in surveillance system throughout our subdivision here. We're going to put up solar street lots throughout our subdivision here. We're going to build a new rear gate going to the beach. And while they were there, they wanted to vote for a president and to get this started. And all of a sudden, uh, everyone nominated me <laughs> and it was unanimous. And I am now the HOA, the subdivision president here. And I mean, it wasn't even nothing like, I, I didn't even say like, yeah, I want to be it. You know, I didn't even ever say that. They just all, him, he's the one. And I really appreciate my neighbors for that. I appreciate my community for that. And that even me here as a foreigner, an expat living in this community, that they trust me and they embrace me that much without hesitation to let me be the one to head this up. And we appointed a uh, treasurer and uh, go to set up a bank account and everything. And we're, we've got a meeting coming off with our Baranga captain and Tagawa's, uh, whoever, which ones want to come and join this next Sunday. And we're making all this happen. So I'm asking, if you want to come here and you want to see our place, you need to communicate with us in advance. And if we don't get with you, don't just show up anyway, like we've had to happen. Be respectful, because at this point in time, there will be guards on the property, and we are going to be uh, stopping who's coming in. And if they say, hey, we're going back there to see James and all, and they say, does he know you're coming? And they call me up, and I don't know it, you're not coming in, okay? Because I want to be respectful to my neighbors and my community. And, uh, and we want our privacy. Melinda told me even just this evening that she was outside and there was a white man in a vehicle taking pictures of the front of our house. And I'm, I appreciate that, that's exciting, but it's also on borderline stalking, you know, uh, because it impedes on our privacy and our private time. And we really want to still have privacy even though we have this vlog. Um, so if y'all don't mind, no more ambushing. Contact me if I get with you and we set a time. So be it. If I don't, just respect that, please, okay? Well, let's get on with today's video. 
So Melinda and I, we are preparing for a trip going back up to Manila and we're gonna be taking our truck on a row row. Uh, we've got something very important to handle up there and to bring back down to Panay Island. <laughs> that mask, that fuzzy stuff inside's got my nose itching. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> sorry for that. So um, I'm at a truck accessory shop here that that I've been here and bought some stuff from before. It's right here in Ilo Ilo and Molo, right at Molo Plaza. In fact, that's Molo Plaza right out my back window right there. And I'm gonna do a little walk around in here. I was looking to have a tow hitch put on the back of my truck. Uh, they don't have it in stock, so it take it two or three weeks to come in. But what they did have was a roof rack that I want up here. Um, for cargo and stuff to carry up on top of my cab on my Nissan and it was the exact brand and the one that I've been looking for and they had it sitting here in stock and I didn't have to pay shipping and all to get it brought down here so anyway let's go inside and have a look This is definitely a boy's shop right here. The boy's toys, look at that rollover bars yeah, and all right there. Boy toys. Yeah, boy toys. And something else I'm looking at is maybe uh, updating the suspension on my truck. Uh, maybe putting something a little heavier, something maybe in the shocks, the struts, the springs, we'll see. Um, I'm looking at that too, we're talking about it here right now. They're checking on what's available so they got these different roof racks this is an aluminum one here crawler brand uh, this one's a little over six thousand pesos for it um, got another one here that looks like it's about six seven also aluminum black a little slimmer and smaller but the one i'm going with is this steel one it's deeper um, it's a little bit more rugged looking it's, it's around with the discount they gave and all install installation everything um, I think it was just a little over nine thousand something pesos and we're gonna get that put on there right now this is something we've really been wanting so we have a few other places we need to be this morning but I seen that and I said you know what that's what I want right there hey so hold on a second so actually we might have a little change of plans we may not I, I didn't see around the corner here they have this longer one and mine is a four-door truck um, this is a little wider too I don't know if I want it yet or not it's just a little bit more money uh, about 40 more dollars um, we're gonna see so what they're gonna do for me right now talk to them while we pause the cameras they're gonna take this one and go set it on the roof of my truck and we're gonna look at it and then maybe we're gonna take the other one and set it and see which one looks best to me, which one I'm more happy with. Okay, okay. It's so good. So good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I might want that bigger one. So, I don't know. I mean, that one, it's okay, but I would still want to see that larger one. You know, it's better to make your choice now something you're happy with instead of just making a quick decision. You want, want to know the name of this place if you're around this area. It's called Ground Effects. There's some other places up in the city I'll probably go by up there too. Um, this one's over in Molo, but there are some places over in city proper 
and downtown Elo Elo as well. Um, we'll do a little checking on that too. This was quite a bit bigger. I can kind of already tell this is more what I want. Yeah, I can tell you this is more what I want right here. Yeah, this is the one I want. This is the one I want. Um, uh, th this is the one I want. I want this one. Yeah, I don't want that one. Uh. I want that one, yeah. Yeah, I definitely do. And it fits right with my with my antenna here on the back. It clears my antenna. It's uh pretty good with the slope here on the front coming off the windshield. I I like this one better. I really do. But it's a four four truck, Mel and I when we do get out and travel, we do go to some off-road places and uh, we're wanting to put some all-terrain type tires on there. Which ones you like here, Ma? What's your style? Those are all the very large size rims. Um, our truck is not really set up with that. I, I want to keep a little bit more meat that I can like deflate down, um, get better traction when I need to. You know, that's the thing when you put these really large wheels on and you put these low profile tires, um, you don't have that capability of letting pressure off and letting your tires sag down and get better traction. And then when you're back on the highway, airing them back up and all. I mean, you just don't have that luxury. If you're going to truly be driving it off road, you want to still stick with not having a great big rim inside of there and, and having a little bit taller of a sidewall. And also the next thing is it protects you against rocks and stuff you could get up against that can damage your rim too. With having a great big rim and a low profile tire, striking that if you are in an off-road situation. Definitely having a higher sidewall will once again protect you from a lot of those type things. Yeah, for me this is just all show and no go right here. Changes your gear ratios. Uh, you start doing that, you really change the design gear ratios. You can put a lot more strain on your drivetrain, on um, your clutches in your transmission, everything. It's just uh, not good, especially if you're using it. If you're slow highway cruising, maybe not that big a deal. But if you're really getting out and using it, it's going to make a difference. Yeah, so we'll. We've been here and I was talking to Melinda and I was teaching her about this wheel offset. Um, like, that's, that's a pretty sunk in wheel factory on the trucks. You know, they're keeping it tucked in, keeping it narrow, more aerodynamic and all. If you want to widen the stance up some and you don't want to put wheel spacers, I seen some wheel spacers here just a minute ago. 
I mean, that and all, that's, they look similar. That's not a pair of wheel spacers because they don't have lugs on them. That's for uh, your shock, I mean, your coil over springs. Where is that? Uh, well, I've seen some here earlier. If I see them again, a wheel spacer is just an aluminum block that looks similar to this with lugs sticking out of it that you can bolt on where your rim goes, and then you bolt your rim on that. Now, that's one way to offset out your factory rims on there. Maybe you want to upgrade your rims to a different style, a different look, and you want it to set out more beefy, well, you can do an offset rim like this. If you was to take and lay a straight edge across here, this is sunk in, the wheel's out, to where this one over here, you see, is more flat, more flat, or like mine out there, more flat. So you can just go with an offset rim, and there's different levels of offsets you can get. You can get some of them that are set way in and brings the wheel way out now you can do some damage to your truck if you offset them too much uh, you'll put a lot of stress on some parts because anytime you have a lever out and once you stick these out wider they're they have more of a leverage that is pulling on your joints and your parts underneath there more so you know it can look good to offset a little bit but if you do too much you're really going to change the dynamics of your truck or how the suspension was designed and for the parts to wear and you'll probably cause some premature failure to some front end parts this is not a bad offset on this rim right here it's it's a mild offset not too bad at all this would probably be a really good choice not a bad looking rim really either you know pull their little tape off there and we'll get a better look at this rim just just for an instance here there we go that's not a real bad looking rim there itself. We probably would not go with an aggressive mud tire. I don't want the roar going down the road and all. Um, I do want to keep a little bit of gas mileage. So I would probably go with something that's more like a sand tire, more like this is right here. Um, these are still have some good highway purpose to them. They don't wear down as fast as a true aggressive mud grip. You don't get that loud roar. and um, But you still do get some good traction and it does still spread the water out good. If you, a lot of you don't know, when you drive in water, these channels right here allow the water to shoot out the side through them while this continues to keep traction. For some of you may not know that. So how this disperses the water out is very important if you're gonna drive in a lot of wet conditions. And that's when your tread gets wore down and it gets really low, then the water has less of a channel to shoot out the sides as you're driving. And that's gonna give you a higher chance of hydroplaning. And so you always want to you know, not drive on tires that are really worn down, especially if you're gonna be in wet conditions. Well, I'm here in the Philippines where it's a long rainy season here and there's a lot of roads that get standing water on them. So it's very important to keep good tread on your tires and to make sure it's a tire that can really throw that out. So what she's telling me here, we're talking about these rims, is that the Nissan Navara, basically the Nissan truck and SUV, Navara and the Terra, that even though um, it is six hole, just like the Toyota, the, the Ford, the Isuzu D-Max, all of them, the spacing in between is different and these won't fit. The Nissan has its own spacing separate than all the other manufacturers so that's some good information if you're even going to be out there trying to buy some secondhand rims on marketplace or anything for your vehicle beware of that that they're even though they're both six lug and they're both japanese make there is a difference in spacing across there and that's some good information i'm glad she shared that with me because i didn't realize that nissan had its own spacing that's very interesting so i was talking about wheel spacers and adapters this is a set of wheel spacers right here so you would bolt this on through these holes over your existing lugs and then you bolt your factory rim or whatever rim you have on these and it would give you an instant offset out of this much now i know that that little bit right there doesn't look like very much but trust me when you put it on your vehicle it is a huge difference to how it changes the look uh, don't think, oh man, you need something that sticks out here three or four inches. First, it's really hard on your drive line like that, your suspension, I mean, and um, and it's just too much. This right here is probably all 
that you would ever need and it makes a huge difference okay. yes ma'am so we've been looking through here on their book of the different off-road front bumpers they have they have more all through in here and uh the one that i like is this one right here it's the closest one now mine don't have that bar over the top but the rest of it's the closest one in the design to that smitty built that i have back there in the u.s that i put on the tundra and you can see it installed there it's got those squared edges the square corners like my smitty built uh, i've got the place for the d-rings uh the winch out the front and all very similar and what i like about it better than my smitty built is i like that bar over the top right there i really do it guards that grill and all as well uh actually even the delight design the double lights that's also just like the smitty built and to be honest we don't know that smitty built may just be a name stuck on there from another manufacturer that's just so common these days they'll just put their well-known name on somebody else's product because as i'm looking at this it sure looks like it other than a couple little uh things like that right there it looks like the same unit um well she said that this book's older as you see 2018 book they've had to update the price and you said it's what now uh seventy nine thousand as of now the price seventy nine thousand. is that include installation yeah okay so give you a little idea right there well it is the end of another day here in the philippines and today monday has been uh, pretty much a rainy day. We got caught in some really good downpours today. Uh, Mel and I, we ran around the city all day doing tasks. Meanwhile, while Mel and I were out today, we bought bicycles. We sure did. We bought us two bicycles for here in the Philippines. Here's Miss Melinda's bike right here. Um, she really likes it. A good looking little bike and this is my bike right here now we brought our accessories from our bikes from the US so like our headlight phone holders our tail light our seats that we're comfortable with uh, my air pump all of that stuff our helmets of course all of those accessories we brought with us and i'll get them on down here probably tomorrow well thank you everybody for watching our video today i hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one god bless